Hey guys and welcome to Little Black Button 91. We're talking to you guys about Lifetime TV and why they are bringing in Devon Franklin for Married at First Sight. I promised you a part two. I want to tell you the reason why they decided to bring in Devon Franklin. There is a reason, I believe so. This is just my theory though, but I believe it to be true. Listen, if you're new to the channel, do me a massive, massive favor. Like it, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for notification of the uploads. And for those of you who are returnees, you already know what it is, baby. You got the minerals, you got the minerals. Stay hydrated because the streets out there, they are hot. Fantastic. All right, cool. So I spoke about uh, last uh, the last... Uh, part one, I spoke about Devon Franklin, why he should be on it, because just because he's divorced doesn't mean he shouldn't be on it, because he's got great advice to give, um, and it'll be amazing to hear his thoughts. Now, I want to talk a bit about the reason why I believe Lifetime chose Devon Franklin, and why they wanted him, even after he just recently divorced, as not chosen on the show. Now, my own, I should have said this in my other video, my only um, uh, caveat to this is, he had only left his... He had been separated with Megan for four months when they approached him and then divorced now for about a year and a bit now. I was like, is that enough time to have let him do his own healing journey so that he can speak from a place of not hurt? That's my question, right? I know he was separated for four months and then obviously now it's been almost a year. I'm like, has he fully healed? I don't know. If he has, cool, fantastic. Let's go. Let's kick, you know, let's kick some um, some some asses and let's, let's, let's give some great advice on the show. Happy to hear it. Um... The reason why I believe that Lifetime have brought him in, I don't know if you've noticed, okay, because the lineup's going to be now Pastor Cal, Dr. Pepper, and it's going to be Devon Franklin. There might be actually one more person, I think. I think there's one more person who might be replacing one of the persons, right? So we're going to have Dr. Cal, Dr. Pepper, and we're going to have Devon Franklin. Then we're going to have on the Lifetime after show, Keisha. Now, I don't know if you noticed, that's a lot of black. That's a lot of black on screen, okay? And if you know anything about our Caucasoid counterparts, when they start seeing too many of us, they start getting itchy. You know what I mean? Like, they start calling it a black show instead of just saying that the show is going on, you know, and has black people in it. But I'm also very much aware that I believe that this show is trying to draw now a particular audience. I think it's trying to draw a particular demographic of audience, right? Because we are one of the biggest consumers of these kind of shows. I really believe they're trying to draw a particular audience because when you have Devon Franklin, his audience not only does he hit, not only does he, not only is he, is he palatable. Let's be let's be very frank. He's very palatable not only to black people but to white folk too. Okay, so he's a perfect balance, I think, in between of of uh, this show and where it potentially could be going. But uh, it definitely will draw more on the black demographic, not only the black demographic, but again, it's the black Christian demographic, because, again, it's about what marriage, which is, you know, oftentimes associated with Christianity and stuff. And we have him and then we have Pastor Cow as well. So we now got two pastors on this show. Now, if we've got two pastors, I'm expecting some pastorials. I'm expecting some pastoral vices, you know. All right, I want to see some pastoral vices, yeah. But no, in real, in real, real spit, I really do believe they're trying to target now a particular demographic of audience, and I think having Devon on there helps to do so without it becoming in your face. So, like, you know, when we talk about black people on a stage, and again, this is my theory, and I could be absolutely wrong. Okay, I could be absolutely wrong, you know, and I'll be happy for you to disagree in the comment section. In fact, I I will it, please, if you disagree or you agree leave your comment in the comment section because it's good to have these kind of conversations and then I can go and sit back and go, mm, maybe I didn't get it right, right? But this is my theory that came to my mind. I was like, I think they're trying to draw for a particular demographic. Now, the demographic oftentimes isn't men, it's black women, okay? All right, so having someone like Devon Franklin who not only is he a godly man, okay? Not only did he divorce Megan in a seemingly calm manner without no backbiting, no messiness, you know, he's also a black man too. Um, actually, I don't know his background, so let me not, let me, not, let me not antagonize the audience, but yeah, I see me for me is a black man as well. Um, you know, and also from a Christian perspective, and then he's written a book called uh, The Weight. So he has got a very, what we call ski, squeaky clean image. Okay. And that is palatable for a particular, is palatable for uh, white audiences to be able to soak in and not be offended. Because let's keep it a buck. Our counterparts do get offended when they see start seeing too many of us on the screen. Um, and that allows them to also sim simultaneously still draw in a black crown. And, you know, maybe maybe they want to pull some more money and get a newer demographic. 
who knows but i can see there seems to be a new draw with having him on this on the screen as well you know it's not you know before we had we had dr cole um but now we've got an, and again we've got another male which is also very interesting how things work because what you realize is when males are involved women tend to be drawn to them like tend to be drawn to what advice they will give that's why kevin summers was so successful drawn to what they will say right because it's oftentimes trying to hear what men have to say kind of thing i'm also interested in terms of the dynamics of how this will change now having not two women but one woman and two men how does that change the way they look at the scenarios because in the australia version i think they had at one point two women sometimes have two men and in the uk british one they had two men um at a point and they've had i think they've had two women as well but consistently for this one for the, for the longest amount of time we've had one guy and two women so it's interesting now how it's going to change the dynamic of having two men how would it change how they give advice how would it change how they react to um to the couples how would it change how they react to certain adversities within each uh, couple as well it's gonna be very very frank and very interesting so let us know your thoughts down below what do you think do you think i'm i'm, I'm reaching too hard do you think i'm punching too high maybe you know let me know your thoughts down below uh we'd like to hear your thoughts as well.